Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God a hand praise, for he's worthy to be praised on tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many glad to be back in God's house on tonight? Praise God. We just thank and praise God for Jesus on tonight. We just give honor to our pastors, Pastor Eddie and Pastor Yadira, in their absence, their way, just having a good time resting and celebrating his birthday. Amen. Praise God. But we do, we still go forward in Jesus. Amen. Thank God that God has equipped his, his church and we are a body ministry. So we have many other members that are able and capable of going forth in the Lord. Amen. So we're just going to go through our weekly announcements first before we bring the word. And so we have some save the dates Tuesday, May 2nd. We have prayer in Roman and Elena's home from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And then on Friday, May 5th, we have the men's Bible study and prayer at 7 p.m. And that's going to be in Nate Lloyd's home. And then on Friday, May 12th, we have our Committed to Love Marriage Ministry. And that starts at 6.30 p.m. and it's right here in the sanctuary. So couples, you know how we do it. We all bring a dish, a main dish or a salad or a dessert, but just something really good to share with one another. Amen. And then we have our special event this Friday. We have Region 22. That's our youth and young adult event for ages 13 to 21. So come out this Friday, April 28th. Registration will begin at 6 p.m. And the service will begin at 6.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. And then because of this event, our Faith Room Women's Bible Study is canceled. Then we want to have our, we always want to remember our apostles as, as they are committed to the Lord to go unto the nations. Amen. And so we have restoration. This is the ministry that God has given them to go. So it's called restoration to the nation. And the Father's heart is in operation as our spiritual parents, Apostles Kim and Dara Gaskin, are, they're based right now in Europe and taking the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the nations. I believe they're going, preparing to go to Portugal at this time and please continue to cover this is really important please continue to cover our apostles in prayer and how many know that you can't take the word you can't take the word the word to the world unless you're financed amen so we want you to remember to continue to financially support our apostles because they really need our support two ways prayer first of all and then secondly in our finances and what I like about it you know I don't like those long distance traveling I don't like that never did never would and so what I do I go by means of my money you you know some of us have not even been called to go to the nations but guess what we can support them and I can go to Africa I can go to Brazil I can go to Poland with my dollars amen and so that's what I do I participate by sowing and even sowing into our, our in-house missionaries and so we also have our food giveaway ministry it's well and is running well uh, with Brother Nate and Sister Christina. And immediately after service tonight, you can pick up uh, some, some fresh produce. And we have a box of food that is already prepared for you in the multi-purpose room. Amen? This ministry is truly has been a blessing. And just keep praying that God will continue to supply. Amen? Now it's time to receive our offering. Amen? Come on. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Look at my paper. It's flying. <laughs> we have four ways to give on tonight. The ushers are in the aisle. If you need an offering envelope, we ask that you raise your hand at this time. And the, and the ushers are available to serve you. We, give, we can give by our offering envelope, cash or check. Or we can sell by using the email WHCO Nation at gmail.com or you can text the word give to this number 
833-539-0171. Or finally, you can use the square reader, and that's for credit card purposes. And you still need to prepare an offering envelope, and you can see myself. Now remember, and you all have been doing really good with this, I need you to continue to remember that when you zell or give by text, to use the memo line and indicate the type of donation so that your funds can be allocated properly. Amen. These are your announcements for this week, and we ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. How many is ready for the Word of God on tonight? Hallelujah. Bless your name. Praise God, we have a special treat on tonight. We haven't heard from her in some time now, but she is a teacher of the Word of God. Amen. So just so I know for a fact that when you leave, you will not be confused. You will be totally, totally, totally in a, in a place of awareness that you've never been before. That's what the teacher does of the word. The teacher breaks down the word to the lowest compound. Amen. And when you leave, there's not going to be any question in your mind when the teacher goes forth. I love the gift of the teacher. Amen. So we're going to rest on our feet at this time, and we're going to give honor where honor is due. And I'm going to present to you none other than our children's pastor, Miss Candace. Miss Candace, now she's all the way. I have to in introduce the song and present to others all the way from Lancaster, California, Miss Candace James. Wow. <laughs> Amen, everybody. Well, praise God, everyone. You know what? Stay standing. Stay standing. We're going to pray. Um, and let me get myself situated here. All right, we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight. Lord, I just pray that your presence would be in the midst of us. Lord, I know that it is. And Lord, I thank you that you are going to speak through my mouth, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the hearers that are here tonight. Father God, anoint the ears of the hearers, Father God, that everything will be clear and understood. And Father God, that we will leave here filled with the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, you can go ahead and have a seat. So, as Elder Beatrice said, um, I am a teacher. For those of you who don't know who I am, um, I'm the children's pastor. I've been working with kids. Um, oh, Chris, can you turn off that, that or, or turn it this way? Thanks. Um, I've been working with children since, gosh, since I was 19 years old. And um, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I am um, I'm in my 50s. Okay, let's just put it that way. <laughs> so... Um, Teaching is something that is actually um, a generational blessing in my family um, because um, I come from teachers um, and um, on my mom's side especially. Um, so we, we have always been um, one to just love the word of God uh, on my mom's side. She she, I remember being a child, and this is just a little bit uh, of lineage. I remember being a child and seeing my mom at the kitchen table with her Bible open, and um, some of y'all don't know, some of you younger ones don't know what this is, a concordance and uh, a notebook, and she would take notes, and she'd be reading her Bible and studying it. And one of the things about being a teacher is that you're a student. You're a student, and you, um, you love to learn. And that should be all of us, amen? We should always be, we always want to know the word of God and know who Jesus is and break it down. Like, God, what does this mean? Like, you know, um, and just uh, get into the word of God like that. Um, and, you know, it maybe if you're not there, that's something you can believe God for. And so speaking of believing God, today we're going to be talking um, about uh, like uh, something that um, pastors talked about last time and they started on that and we're going to talk about faith and what is what does it mean to walk by faith but 
in a practical sense, because one of the things I have always been really big on is really how do you make the Word of God and the principles in the Bible practical? How do you do this every day? How do you do this on Thursday morning, you know, after you had your coffee and you got to go to work? How, how, how does that work? And so I'm really, I'm really big on that. And so we're going to be breaking down the, um, the concept of faith today, okay? So one of the things I want to talk about is what faith is not, okay? We've heard a lot over the years about, um, you know, uh, walking by faith, name it and claim it, uh, whatever, you know, um, the prosperity, all these things. But one of the things that we want to really understand that faith is not Faith is not some magic formula that says, oh, you do this three times and poof, there it is. It's, you know, magic, you know. We don't believe in magic. Well, magic's of the devil. Anyway, so, but one of the things it's not, it's not a magic formula. It's also not a gimmick. It's not some, you know, oh, well, you know, if you do this, like again, if you do this three times, then it's, it's, it, it'll magically happen, you know? And it's not a way to manipulate God, saying, God, well, I believe you, and I did this thing that Miss Candace said that we're supposed to do. You owe me now, you know? It's none of that. What faith is, is one of the key principles that God has set in motion on this planet to say, okay, this is how in my dealings with mankind, in my kingdom, this is how things run, okay? So one of the things, um, I know you guys have got my um, scriptures up there, and um, we're going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 first. So I like to say it this way. Faith is one of the three fundamental forces in the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, And now abides faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Okay? These are three, what I say, fundamental forces. Fundamental things are, are, are reliable forces. They work the same every day for, for, for Chris, just like for me, just like for Elder Beatrice, just like for Christina. Okay? They work the same. They are natural forces. So think about a natural, or excuse me, they're as reliable as natural forces. So they are supernatural forces. So think about a natural force, say gravity. Gravity doesn't say, you know what, I'm gonna work for you, but you over there, you're gonna float off. You know, it, it, I mean, gravity doesn't work like that. Gravity is the same. It's the same for everyone, okay? As long as you are on the right side of the principles of gravity, right? You know, what goes up comes down, right? So that works for, you know, keeping us, you know, on the planet and not floating off into space. But you can be on the wrong side of gravity, right? If you're on top of something and you fall down, you know, gravity still works. So faith is like that, okay? Faith is one of those things. The Bible says that it is impossible to please God without faith, okay? It is impossible to please God without faith. Now, those other two forces, hope and love, the Bible says that love is the very nature of God. It also says that faith works by love, okay? So you can be working in the principles of faith, but if you don't have love in your heart, your faith's not going to work right, okay? Hope, now a lot, there's a lot of people that talk about hope. One of the things I like to say, hope is like a blueprint. Hope is the blueprint of, of faith, okay? And uh, we'll get into, into that in just a little bit. The second thing that faith is, is that faith is a substance. Hebrews 11.1 1 says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So another way of saying that is like faith is like the building material and hope is like the blueprint. So when you say that faith is a substance, think about a substance. This pulpit is, a, you know, it's, 
It's a pulpit, but it's made out of something. It's a substance. It's made out of metal. Okay? So hope is the blueprint. So when we pray for something and we say, God, you know, I'm believing you for this. Our hope is that image on the inside of us that says, you know what? I see it. This is what, you know, I see myself well. I see myself, you know, financially prosperous. Um, but faith is that building material. Faith is what builds it up and says, you know what? I believe because the Bible says, I believe what the Bible says. Now, faith is not something that is just by itself. Faith has to be attached to the word of God. It's not just faith in, well, just I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. It's not that. It's no, the Bible says it. God's not a liar, so I believe it. So that is what faith is. That's what biblical faith is. Let's put it that way, okay? All right, so faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right, so we're talking about that faith is one of the building blocks of the kingdom. Hebrews 11.3, so script over 11.2 and go to 11.3. Um, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made by things which are visible. All right? So God created the world. He spoke it into existence by his word. But by faith, we, even though we didn't see it happen, we know that, that's, that God framed the world, okay? That is how everything in the kingdom of God works. We don't see it with our natural eyes, but we know that it's true because God said it in his word. Now, I didn't give um, this scripture to the, um, to the media team, but Hebrew 11, 6, Hebrews 11, 6 says that even to come to God, we must first believe that he is. Now, we've never seen God, okay? But we have to believe that he is without seeing him, without maybe even hearing him, okay? Well, you can hear God's voice, but maybe before we got saved, we didn't hear God's voice, okay? Well, some people did, but most of us didn't hear God's voice. So faith is a fundamental building block. You can't even get saved without it. We can't even, we can't receive anything from God without first believing that, oh my goodness, I didn't even look at my time. Sorry. Okay. Um, but we have to first believe that he is before. And, and that the rest of that scripture is that, that we have to first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so that means that if you diligently seek God and you say, okay, God, you said in your word that by, your, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Okay, so I haven't seen it yet, but you know what? You said it, that settles it. Okay, so coming back to that understanding, when we come back and we'll, you know, when we talk about the word of God, we have to understand that in order to have faith in the word of God, you got to believe that that's the final authority. The Bible is it. If it's in the Bible, that's it. Okay? It can't be, well, you know, I, I, I know the Bible says that, but I don't know if I really believe that. No. The Bible says it. God says it. I believe it. That settles it. Okay? That has to be our, the final authority in our life. All right? So talking about that, the next thing that faith is, is that faith is a shield, okay? Ephesians 6, 16 says, above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one, all right? Faith is a shield. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm writing a book, um, and one of the things in it is that um, faith is a shield, an actual force field that surrounds one of my characters. And I, liked, I like that analogy because faith surrounds us. It comes, no, no matter which way the devil comes at you, when you believe and you stand steadfast in the word of God, he just bounced right off on you. He just like that fiery dart, he's like pew, pew, pew. And I don't know if it makes that noise, but praise the Lord. Um, but it, it comes at you and it doesn't matter because you're like, no, 
The word of God says his angel, he gives his angels charge over me to protect me in all my ways. No weapon formed against me will, will prosper. Okay? All of those things. And you stand on that. And again, the word of God is, is, is true. And that settles it. The enemy is going to come. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. The enemy is going to try to come. He's going to think that he thinks it's his job or whatever, you know, but he's going to try to come and he's going to try to throw fiery darts. Okay. Those, those fiery darts that this scripture is talking about. A lot of times those fiery darts come in the way of like thoughts, feelings. I mean, he comes with the full package, right? He comes with those thoughts. Those thoughts come with feelings. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's something, something trips up in the nap, in the natural, all of that. That's how he comes, right? Cause, but he doesn't know what to do when you say, you know what? I'm not moved by any of that. I'm not moved by what, I mean, I may have this thought, but I cast down every vain imagination, every thought that tries to exalt itself above the word of God. I cast that down. And I, I mean, for those of you who don't know, um, or haven't been around me a lot, I talk to myself out loud and everything. And sometimes I'm saying uh, that. And so if, you, if you're close enough, you know, <laughs> Sometimes people are like, excuse me, did you say something? No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. You know, I'm talking to, I'm talking to Jesus. I'm talking to rebuking the devil, whatever I got to do at that moment. Because we oftentimes, um, and we'll get into this in just a minute, faith comes by hearing. So sometimes we have to allow our ears, our own ears, to hear the word of God coming out of our own mouth. And that is how that whole, there's a whole cycle there. Faith comes by hearing and out, of the, and, and, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you speak the word of God, it goes into your ears, it drops down into your heart, then it comes out your mouth. And then you go, it goes back into your ear, drop down into your heart, comes out of your mouth. Okay? So that's that whole cycle that God himself put together. God himself put that together so that even if you're all by yourself and you're like Miss Candace, you could say stuff out loud and your, your ears will hear it. It'll get into your spirit and then it'll come out again. And so you have to understand that declaring the word of God is one of the biggest ways to build your faith. So our, our faith in God is what defends us from every attack of the enemy. Okay? So when thoughts of doubt, unbelief, fear... Those are, the, what, those are the fiery darts that try to come in my life. I've, I've had personal experience with that. You know, where all of a sudden I'm just getting anxious about a situation. Or I'm, I'm like, I'm not really convinced that God is, it, did God, you know, like how he came in the garden. Did God really say that that was going to happen? Yeah, God really said it. And so you have to sometimes say it out loud to yourself and remind yourself, re remind yourself, stir yourself up in your most holy faith, okay? That's how you do that, all right? I'm sorry, if I'm saying all right and amen and I'm just, I'm saying it to my, I'm saying amen. Um, so one of the things the Bible talks about when, and, and this goes into what we were just saying, um, in Romans 4.17, it says, as it is written, and this is God um, talking about Abraham here. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Now, let's talk about Abraham, okay? Abraham is called the father of faith. Now, Abraham was 75 years old. Not only did he not have a baby, he was past the age of having a baby. And Sarah was 65 years old. Okay, she was... She was, and, and think about this, and th this is how God does, okay? Because God is really big on, you ain't never gonna get the glory for it. God's gonna get the glory for this. So Sarah was 65 years old, and ladies, we all know there's a certain point where you can't have, you know, menopause happens, and you can't have a baby anymore. Well, here's the, here's the trip, all right? Not only was Sarah 65 years old, when she was 20 years old, she was barren. So she was infertile when she was eight, what, at the age of having a child. She was never able to have a child, okay? So not only did God say you're going to have a child, but God also waited until Sarah was past the age. She, she was infertile at 20. Now she's 65, so there's just definitely no way in the natural. And then Abraham was 75. But Abraham believed God. 
And he believed God with nothing in the natural that said that this was going to happen. Because not only was all of it in the natural impossible, nobody had ever believed God for anything like this. Okay? So Abraham just knew God told me to go to this land. I didn't even know where I was going, but God told me and I went. He, he, God prospered him. God took care of him in that land. And then he said, I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And in, and in the presence of him, who belie he believed. So in God's presence, he said, okay, God, you, you said it, I believe it. And then it says in Romans 4, 17, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. That is how God works. He doesn't wait until it happens in the natural. Then he says, yeah. Can you imagine? God, God said, let there be light. Nobody had even heard what light was. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Could you imagine if God had gone out there in the darkness and said, man, it's dark out here. It would have gotten more dark. Because why? He spoke it before it happened. And then it happened. Then... God taught, and Abraham followed suit. He started calling himself Abraham. His name was Abram before, right? Great father, that's what Abram means. But then Abraham means father of a multitude, okay? So he started calling himself that when he didn't have any kids. So that is one of the things that faith speaks the way God does. Speaking things that be not as though they did, that do, do not exist as though they did. This is how God works, okay? Because faith is believing without seeing. And when I say seeing, I don't mean just like your natural, this is of course in the natural we're talking about, but it's also faith is believing without hearing. Maybe you haven't heard that report yet that you want to hear, you know, about that prodigal that's come home or about you know, what the doctor, you know, that you heard, you heard the opposite report from the doctor. Okay. But faith says, you know what? No, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Therefore I am healed. And I'm, I believe God, even if the, even if the natural circumstances are saying something else, faith is saying, you know what? No, I believe what the word of God says. And that is going beyond our natural senses. Okay. Um, you can live to the point that the word of God becomes more real to you than what is happening in your natural world around you. And this is what, this is what it is to walk by faith. That's why, you know, uh, the, the Bible says that we are a peculiar people because it doesn't make sense in the natural, you know, to say, you know what, um, by this time next year, I'm going to be out of debt. I owe no man anything but to love him. I'm, 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 you know, those bills, no, God, you've got it. You're, you're, I, I, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror, you know, um, I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out. Those, that's what the word of God says, that's what I'm believing for. Even when you get in those phone calls, right? You know, we all know about those. Well, maybe, maybe y'all don't know about it. I know about those phone calls, you know, and you're like, God, in Jesus' name, no, I am Bless coming in and bless coming out. I am a tither and a giver. And you said that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I don't even have room enough to receive. Okay? Now, I want to tell you this. You see how I'm saying, I'm saying, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying scriptures there. I may not be saying book, chapter, and verse, like 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you know, verse 7. But I'm saying those scriptures. Because one of the things that is so important is to get the word of God inside of you, okay? You've got to be able to, it, it's got to get in your heart so it comes out your mouth. Now, this is me, I'm putting on my Sunday school hat right now, my children's pastor hat. Got to learn those memory verses, guys, okay? Yeah, that's why, it, we, so we teach our kids that, right? We teach our kids, okay, learn John three sixteen for God so loved the world, Okay? There are, and this is to just, I'm going to say John 3, 16. There's people out there in the world that don't even know God 
but they know John 3.16. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, they learn John 3.16. That's the power of getting the Word of God in your heart so that when it's, and it's important even for the children, it's important for us as grown-ups, so that when those times come, you'd be surprised how stuff just starts bubbling up that's in there and the Word of God just comes out and you're like, wow, I didn't even remember that I remembered that scripture. But when you need it, it's there because it's in, it's in your spirit. The Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You hide it in there, you get it in there, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, some practical things about how, how, how I do that. It may not work for you, but this is how I'll, I'll show you how I do it, okay? Now, going back to um, that, what we're talking about, how you live to the point where God, word becomes more real to you than, than the natural circumstances. The Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? We don't walk according to, well, you know, it looks like this is what's happening. So therefore, that must be what's happening. We go by what the word of God says. All right? Sorry. So, Here's a, here's, a, here's a thought. Um, one of the things I was going through, and as I'm doing my, my lesson, I kind of went through the, like, the who, what, why, where, and, and how of faith, okay? So I talked about what is faith. But one of the things I want to make sure everybody knows is, you know, if you talk about who has faith, everybody has faith. It's just a matter of what you have faith in. Everybody has the capacity to believe. Everybody. Saved, unsaved, that is something that is in, that God put in us as human beings. Okay? Romans 12, 3 says, For I say, through the grace given me, and this is the King James Version. I'm going old school with the King James. Um, For I say, through the grace given me, to every man that is among you, don't think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every one of us has a measure of faith. That means everybody here, from the youngest to the oldest, has the capacity to believe God or has the capacity to believe something else. Okay? So I, I like to have this example. Faith is like a muscle. We all have them. When a baby's born, they have the exact same amount of muscles as a grown person. Okay? My other hat is a nurse, so if, if there's nurse stuff comes out, that's why. You, babies are, were all born with a, a little over 600 muscles. Doesn't matter how old you are how, or how young you are, you have about about 603 muscles. Now the question is, as you get older, you know, they grow with you. If you're eating right um, and you're, you're exercising or you're learning how to walk, they grow. As you get taller, they, they get longer. All of those things. Now some of us, you know, they, that like to work out, their muscles are more defined. They're stronger, okay? Maybe if you stop working out, for those that, you know, I've known um, in my life as patients, they've been bedridden. Those much muscles tend to what we call atrophy. They shrink up. But they never lose those muscles unless they have a surgery to go take one out. Okay? But they all have this, we all have the same amount of muscles. So when we have faith, we all, when we're born again, we have the measure of faith that God gave us. Now it's up to us to strengthen that faith, to grow up and, and, and make sure that our faith, that we're nourishing ourselves with the Word of God, okay? We're praying in the Spirit. The Bible says pray in the Spirit to build up your most holy faith, okay? That faith is a muscle, so it can get bigger, stronger, make you go faster, you know? Or it can atrophy because it's not 
being utilized or it's not being fed, you know? So it's up to us to make sure that we are applying the word of God. We're stretching our faith. Now, there's also that point of stretching our faith, you know, taking those steps where we step out in faith, right? Those leaps of faith, as they say, okay? Those are those situations where we're like, okay, God, if you ever hear Miss Candace, I say, okay, Jesus, here we go. You know, and it's just, it's like, I don't know in the natural how this is going to work out, but I'm believing God. And all, that's all I can do in that situation. And so that's stepping out in faith. Okay? That's stepping out and saying, okay, I don't know, but the word of God says this, so I choose to believe it. All right? So where does faith come from? The Bible says faith comes uh, in Romans 10:17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I like to say faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing because it's not just hearing it once. It's not just you come in and you hear it on a Wednesday and then you are full of faith. No, you've got to hear it Monday through Sunday. And that is where, like we say, getting that word inside of you. This is not just reading the Bible, you know. Um, this is actually um, studying the Word of God, getting it in you, okay? Chewing on it like it's a Hershey bar, like it's a good steak, right? And get it in there. Because when you, when you get it into you, it, 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 it can't help but come out. It can't help but say, you know what? Rise up. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring back to our remembrance all of the words of Jesus, okay? The Bible says that. Well, if the words of Jesus aren't in the remembrance or you've never read them, the Holy Spirit doesn't have anything to work with. So you have to give the Holy Spirit something to work with, all right? So one of the things I'd like to do, and I'm going to take a, take a little bunny trail here, is is, is talk to you guys about how I study the Bible, all right? So this takes some time. And I know in our generation, we like stuff instant. We like to just, you know, go and, and uh, get it after five minutes and that's it. But this is not how the kingdom of God works. The kingdom of God works where you study to show yourself approved. That's a scripture. A workman that doesn't need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you get your Bible, maybe uh, your Bible app, you, um, well, first thing, let's talk about memorizing scriptures. Okay, I'm a little old school uh, in some things. In some things, I can, I, can, I can hang with the kids in some things. Okay, but I'm one of those ones. And I know some of you may have heard this before, but I write down things on little three by five cards. These are scriptures. And this is only some of my collection, where I physically go in and I get the Bible, get the word on whatever particular subject I need, and I get that scripture and I write it out. There's something about saying it out loud that gets it into your spirit. There's also something about writing it down that gets it into you. Because you're, you, I, I don't know, I don't know if that's just how God made us, but some of us, it's like, if I write something down, I'm more likely to remember it. You know, um, if I try to say, okay, especially maybe as I get older, but the memory of the righteous is blessed. So, uh, but if I write something down, I'm like, okay, um, it's not taking up brain space, but it's getting into my heart. And I say it, I write it, um, I write it out. So like, say for example, this is Mark 11:22 through 24, one of my favorite scriptures. And it says, so have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he said shall be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, that you ask when you pray. So it depends on the version that you're, that you're, you're, you're memorizing. That you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it, then you shall have it. 
Okay? That's Mark 11, 20, 22 through 24. Another one is um, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. So there's a principle there. Keep the word of God in your eyes and then it won't depart from your heart. So all those things, these are things that are in the Bible. And when you're reading and you're, you know, a lot of us, we read the Bible and okay, we read our chapter a day or we read a Proverbs a day. But sometimes what you need to do is we need to just stop and get one scripture. Oh, hello. Sorry, mute my line. Um, we get one scripture and we just meditate on that one scripture. And we say, you know what? What does that mean? Okay. Another thing I do, I put myself in the scripture. Okay. One of my favorite verses is, um, I'm sorry. Why is my phone going off? Here we go. Sorry about that. But one of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 27. And I put myself in that. I who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Okay? Sorry, I said Psalms 27. Uh, that's um, Psalms 91. But um, I, say, I say it, well, say Psalms 91. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I rest under the shadow of the Almighty. No, that is Psalms 27. I was right. Um, oh, I didn't give it to them. So, oh, she's up there. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My, oh, you can go to verse 2. I say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and the perilous pestilence. Go on. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall I take refuge. His truth is my shield and my buckler. Keep going. I will not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the air that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. During COVID, that was my scripture. That was one of my scriptures right there. Okay, go ahead. Only with my eyes will I look and see the reward of the wicked. Keep going. Because I've made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high my dwelling place, no evil shall befall me, no plague shall come near my dwelling. I was claiming this all 2020 and 2021, okay? For he has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They will bear me up with their hands lest I dash my foot against a stone. I will tread upon the lion and on the cobra, the young lion, the young lion and the serpent shall I trample underfoot. Because, because she, because I have set my love upon you, Lord, you said you would deliver me. You'll set me on high because I've known your name. I will call upon you, Lord, and you will answer me. You will be with me in trouble. You will deliver me. You will honor me. With long life, you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. So knowing those scriptures like that, okay, that takes time, right? It takes time. And I'm not trying to like, it, it, it took time. And this was back in the day before I used my app. I had a physical Bible and I sat down and I went through the scriptures and I learned each one and I put myself in it. But then when trouble came, that's one of my favorites because that to me is like all of it. It's like right there. It's like, God, when, when, when pestilence come, no, no plague shall come near my dwelling. No disaster shall come near my tent. Those things are in there. So those getting your scriptures out, studying the word of God, that is what will help. Okay. That is what will, will, will anchor your soul because our soul sometimes wants to like, you know, react to natural circumstances. I mean, there was a lot going on in the last three years where I'm like, our, I don't know about anybody else, but my soul was like, oh, Jesus. And it was, it tried, tried to come in and shake us. But the word of God is our anchor. 
The Word of God is what we set our feet upon and we say, you know what, this is the rock. I will not be moved, right? So we have to know that and we have to keep, now one thing I will tell you all, this is again, it's something that is consistent. It's like eating. How many know that the memory of a hamburger does not satisfy your hunger? You could remember, I remember I had this hamburger one time. It was just perfect. It was medium, you know, not, not medium rare, just medium. It was perfect. Had the sauce on it, you know, but that's not, if I'm hungry right now, that's not going to do anything but make me more hungry because then you're remembering and now you're like, but I don't have it and my stomach starts growling and you start having a reaction. So how many know just remembering the scripture doesn't just, doesn't feed your faith. You have to actively or remembering it back then. Well, I used to believe God for, for this thing back here. No, it's an everyday situation. Every day you got to eat, right? Every day you got to eat. Every day you got to study the Word of God, okay? And I get it. There are days where it's like, Lord, it's busy. You know, um, I'm listening to the Word of God in my car, you know, um, or, or that. But there are times where it's like, okay, just like how fast food isn't really good for you, you need to sit down and actually have a meal and sit down and study. Sorry, my script. My computer just went off. And sit down and take some time and really study the Word of God. And that is what will help. That's what will get, get things into you. And I get it. And, and, and I'm preaching to myself in this as well. All right? Life gets busy. Sometimes you don't have, you know, half an hour. But, you know, maybe you can just get that one scripture card out and you can read it. And you could say, you know what, I'm going to meditate on this. And maybe if a scripture card isn't, isn't your thing, you know, you put it on your phone. Or you... Um, uh, I, I use scripture cards because that's what my mom taught me, okay? She used to have little three by five cards and she'd stick it up on the refrigerator. And I remember being a little girl and uh, learning how to read and learning how finally to read the scripture cards that mom had on the refrigerator and on the cabinet, you know, in the bathroom, wherever. But that kept it in front of us. Because how many know you always go to the refrigerator, right? So you're going to see that scripture right there. So, so those are the kind of times where you put that there. But Nowadays, if you have a scripture on your phone, you're going to see it every single time. Put it on your homepage, right? And so that's it. And every time you see it, say it out loud. Say it out loud. And find the scripture for whatever it is you're struggling with. Get that scripture and believe God. Believe it. Get it in there. You know, because when you'll get to a point where your faith starts saying, you know what, it's not just something you say all the time. It is something that actually is real to you. And one of the biggest things that is, is a boost to your faith is when you pray for something and you're believing God and God, and it happens. And you're like, we were believing God for that. And it just happened. And you're like, Jesus, all right. Now, and then you all of a sudden, you're like, look, okay, now what else? Let me get some more scriptures. You know, let me get, well, let me find out what the Bible says, you know, about this, that, and the other. Because the minute I'm telling you one truth, one truth. You'll, you'll be hooked because then you're like, you know what, God, I know that this works. It's not something I heard about. It's something I did myself and it worked. Okay. And that's why I say for me, speaking about faith, it's like, I was like, I was a little excited about coming up here and getting ready to talk about faith because I was like, God, okay, where do I start? Okay. Because I've proven this guys, I've proven it myself. I've proven it in different areas, you know, finances, um, where, you know, believe in God for, um, for things in ministry. Um, I'll tell a story. We were believing God for, um, last year, uh, we were going to, um, go to camp for the kids ministry. And we're going to go to Arizona, and it was the first time. And we're like, Jesus, you know, it's going to cost so many thousands of dollars just to get the van to go, you know. And, um, and then believe in God. And so we were, you know, we were doing the natural stuff. We were fundraising, and we were doing that. But I knew, because I had proven God before, I said, God, I got scripture out on it. I said, Lord, you want these kids to go to camp. You want them to go be in the presence of God. And I said, you said that anything that we agree as touching any, if any two of us agree 
as touching anything, it'll be done by our Father which is in heaven. I'm paraphrasing, okay? So at the time, Sabrina and I, we were believing for, because she's believing for youth camp, and I'm believing for kids camp, and we're putting our stuff together. I said, Sabrina, we're going to believe God. And, and she's like, oh, Miss Candace. And I said, nope, I've seen it, and I know God is faithful. Do you know we were out there, and we were doing a fundraiser out front, and somebody came by, and out of, no, out of nowhere, dropped a check paid for the vans for us to go. And we were just like, okay, and lost it. I lost it. I was like, Jesus, you know, of course. But God did it. And we weren't, we didn't say, okay, God, you know, you got to do it this way for us to believe you. No, God can do it. I'm not, I'm going to tell God his business. You, Jesus, you do, you, you know where I am. Okay. You know how to get it to me. Okay. And he did. And that wasn't the first time. But how many know that the reason why I could be so convinced is because not only did the word of God say so, but that wasn't the first time somebody just walked up to me and said, you know what, I want to sow into the kids' ministry. That wasn't the first time. And I, but the first time, I was like, okay, God, I'm going to believe you. You know, and you, you, know, you do it kind of white knuckle, right? But then after that first time when God says, okay, and he comes through and you didn't even see it coming, then at that point you're like, okay, let's go, Jesus. Okay, let's go. And that is how he builds. We go from faith to faith, right? Because when we, and, and, and we, we, we have faith in the little, then God will make us ruler over much. All of a sudden we start here and then we believe for a little bit more. We believe for a little bit more because how many know the principles of it is the same if you believe in God, I'm talking about finances, if you believe in God for $5 as $500. It's the same principle, okay? And God is like $5, $500, whatever. My streets are made of gold. I can get it to you. You know what I mean? He's not, he's not hard up, right? But that being said, for us in our mind, we think, okay, $5, yeah, I can, I can believe God for $5. Because in our own mind, we're thinking, I know how to make $5. I can get $5 for myself. But when we step out and we say, okay, God, $500. Um, I mean, I, well, I suppose. And then you start thinking how you can make it happen in the natural. But God gets you to the point where it's like, yeah, there ain't no way you can do this in the natural. It's time to believe God. But when he comes through, guys, I'm telling you, when he comes through, then you're just like, the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. But the Bible also says that all things are possible to him who believes. Because when you link up with God, you're linking up with the, with the all things are possible with God. So he's like, I can get it to you. Don't worry about it. But in our own human thoughts, we a lot of times start thinking, well, how's God going to get it to me? Well, is he going to do it this way? Or is he going to do it that way? That's not, that's not faith. Faith is like, God, you do it. And I leave it to you. And then anytime that little thing comes in your head and says, how's God going to do that? Well, maybe it's like this. Well, what if it doesn't happen? You know, the other thing that we have to be careful of is putting a time limit on God. Now, there are some things in the natural where it's like, okay, there's a time limit, like for camp, okay? Camp is certain days and we had to have the money by a certain time. God knows that. But then there's other things where it's like, okay, Lord, um, you know, I want to be out of debt by this time tomorrow. And, 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 and God's like, okay, it didn't take you 24 hours to get where you are. But, pray, uh, you know, but that being said, we put time limits on him. And we say, God, it needs to happen like this. And it needs to happen by this time. Versus saying, God, you know when I need this. Like if it's a bill that needs to be paid. Or if it's, you know... Um, anything. You know that it, those things that have a time frame on it, God knows, you know when, the, when they're saying, I need to have this done. But on those things that don't necessarily have a time frame, you say, God, do what you're going to do. I trust you. The ultimate thing about faith is that it has to be, there has to be a relationship with your heavenly father that says, God, I trust you. When things don't go your way, 
when things look like the exact opposite is happening, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. And we look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We don't look at the natural circumstances. We turn our eyes to Jesus. And, those not, and a lot of times those things can be hard because those things are, you know, especially when we're talking about believing God for a loved one. Um, I'll talk about another situation. Um, I've been saved since I was a little girl. And my mom is the one that took me to church. And, um, and, and my brothers as well. And, but my dad never went to church with us. My mom and dad are still together. They've been together for years and years and years. And I remember being a little girl and believing that my daddy would get saved and crying sometimes because I was like, Jesus, I want my daddy to get saved. I want him to, I want him to go to heaven with us. And I mean, you know, a, a child's prayer. Even as an adult, praying and, and crying out to God for my, for my dad. And I mean, I've been, like I said, I've been saved since I was a little girl. I'd say in the last five years, all of a sudden, there's been a turnaround in my dad. And my dad, my mom just said to him one day, and my mom is bold, um, she said, do you know Jesus? I mean, just like, I mean, he's in the kitchen, you know. I said, are you saved? You know, because they're getting older now. And a lot of times, you know, those are the things. Things start, you know, um, his health is, is okay, but there, he's had some health issues. And it makes you start thinking about things. And he's like, yeah. And, 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 and she made sure. Now, we haven't gotten him at church yet. Uh, they go to church next. My mom and my brother goes to church next door. And, but that would not have been something that... 20 years ago, my dad would have even, he would have been like, ah, you know, whatever. But now God got him to the place where he's turning. And, and that is the kind of stuff that, I mean, it's been f over 40 years that we've been, my mom and I and my brother have been believing God. And I know some of us are like, I don't want to hear that, Miss Candace, 40 years. I do not want to wait that long. But it's just to show you that God knows his business and he's going to do, he's going to do it the best way possible. And that's what it's going to take. If that's what it took for my dad, then that's what it takes for my dad. I don't care. Thank God he's lived a long life and thank God he's able to be here still, you know, but it's, he's, he's a, it's a slow turn, but you know, and sometimes God does like, does it like that. And that's, I mean, we all want that, right? We want it tomorrow. But God knows his business. He knows how to do it. But you have to keep believing. How, how would it have been if we had given up 10 years ago? Said, oh, you know what? He's just never gonna. How, how would have that have been? He would have never gotten there. Okay? We have to remember. We hold fast to our faith to the very end. Okay? Even those that prayers that we have prayed, there are those that have gone on and believed God to the very end. And it wasn't until after they went on to be with the Lord did that prayer get answered because their prayers still stay working even after the fact. Okay? Never give up hope. Never give up your faith. Stand steadfast. Don't stop. Don't stop. You don't know, but what tomorrow that person can have somebody go across their path that preach the gospel to them. Maybe it's not you, but maybe it's that person's, you know, friend or whatever. You don't know. So don't give up your faith. Okay? Don't give up. Saying, and as we said before, faith is like a muscle. And in that believing God and believing God, even when you don't see it and believing God, it's like doing reps in the gym. It's reps and your faith gets stronger and gets stronger. And even if you don't see it, just know God is working. Sometimes the times where God is working the most is when it seems like the least is happening. 
It seems like nothing's happening. Okay, I'm going to tell you another testimony. Um, I have been believing God for many years to get out of debt. Um, I had school loans, lots of school loans. Um, and I had about $50,000 in school loans, over $50,000 in school loans. And, you know, I applied for different things, you know, forgiveness, loan forgiveness, all these things. Uh, and nothing seemed to ever work. But I kept claiming. Now, don't get me wrong. I was not perfect, perfect in it. There were days where I was like, Lord, I'm just, you know, I didn't, I didn't claim it. But there's a scripture that says, oh, no man, anything but to love him. That's in the Bible. I'm like, okay, how do we do that? I thought credit scores were important. Anyway, but knowing that, I said, okay, God, this school loan, though, I got to, I, I believe God for you to get this school loan paid off or, or something to happen with it. It was so, such a big amount. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a nurse, so it's not like I'm not working, but it's such a big amount. It was a stretch of my faith, right? Well, um, sometime back, I, I, like I said, I put in for every type of program that there was, you know, and I just said, okay, God, you know what, forget it. Um, I, I have this plan of how I'm going to pay it off, but it wasn't, it wasn't God's plan, okay? But I said, okay, God, um, and then I'm, I'm going to wrap up after this, but I said, okay, God, I'm just still going to believe you, but I, I'm going to do this. Well, one day I got a letter in the mail from my student loan people. And I hate those letters. I, I just put it on my coffee table because I didn't want to look at it anymore. You know, I, I was like, I just leave it there. Sat on my coffee table for a month. Didn't open it. I didn't want to look at it. Finally, I said, you know, let me open this thing and see what they got to say. They said, congratulations. Your student loan has been forgiven. The full amount. I said, um, well, the full amount that I had owned in, uh, owed in the arrears, the $51,000. I screamed in my house. I was like, the dog was running everywhere. He's like, what's happening, you know? And I said, and it's been sitting there. My answer had been sitting on the coffee table for a month. That's the other thing, you know, because I didn't even like think that the, it, there was going to be any good news. But God came through when I didn't even, I was not expecting it to happen like that or in that time. I didn't think 2023, that's the year for me. No, I, I didn't think that that was, I didn't think it was going to be like that. But God said, you keep believing, you keep believing even when you fall back, get back on it. If you fall, if you say, okay, God, I, I got into doubt, I got into fear, but you get back on it, God will fulfill his promises. He will do it. He will. And, and that was, so that's my latest testimony. And so, yeah, now I'm like, okay, God, hmm, there's, there's this other debt that I, oh, let's, let, let, let's go, you know? So now it's like, but that, 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 that supercharges your faith. When you see that, you know what? Faith and patience, you inherit your promise. You inherit your promise. That's another scripture. With, by faith and, pro, and patience, you will inherit your promise. So stand steadfast, people of God. I just want to say last thing. Like we said, faith is a muscle. Jude 20, uh, verse 1, verse uh, 20. Chapter 1, verse 20. But beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we don't know how to pray, and sometimes our head is getting in our way. Best thing to do when that happens is start praying in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, because then you bypass that, oh, what's going to happen, and how's this going to happen, and da da da, da. And, and your spirit gets built up. And then you're able to say, okay, peace, mind, soul, be still. And you're able, it, it helps. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit every day, Okay. And again, like a, like, a, uh, like a muscle, faith starts small and gets built up into something stronger. When, when do we use our faith? We can use our faith in every situation. And this is my last point. We can use our faith in every situation. The Word of God is the answer to every situation. We just talked about faith, but we must not just believe or hope. We must know. 
that God has said what God has said in his word and it is real that what he says in his word is real and that what God has declared over our lives both in the word of God prophetic words that we've received the Bible talks about waging war with prophecy okay it is real we must apply it to our life apply the word of God to our faith into our life personally every time we pray and know that what God has promised he will do the question is will you hold on long enough to see it that's that is where I'm going to leave you guys with tonight um I don't know if there's uh any I, I this is me this is Sunday school right now uh any questions no <laughs> so any questions anyway no well you can come up afterwards and ask um but again I, I'm not an expert in this I'm learning every day uh, even after doing this for however long I've been doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm not to say that I'm perfect at it. But I will say that I do know that it works. I do know that. All right. All right, everyone. Let's pray and we'll close out. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, that even tonight, that by your power and by your strength, that you've boosted the faith of those under the sound of my voice. As we've gone over the word of God, and as we've said, Lord, you promised in your word, and Lord, as we hold fast to those promises, we know that you are faithful and you are just to fulfill your promises, God. Lord, you, you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man should you repent. What you said, that's what you're doing. That's what you will do, God. So Lord, we thank you and we put our faith in you. We put our faith in your word. Lord, I pray over each and every one that's, that's counted among us, those that are here, those that are online. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that you strengthen us with might in our inner man. Lord, that this word will come back to us, Lord, and that we will find out, Lord, that, we, that each one of my brothers and sisters in here would find out, Lord, how, how to help build their faith in their day-to-day -day walk. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that you strengthen them Lord, for each and every one of us. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that you prove yourself. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. Blessings, blessings.